this is unsettling, and this is actually news to me. I stepped away from keeping up with all these events for a few years. I've only recently gotten back into it. But this morning, Fox News published an article titled, China Flexes Muscles in Latin America and the Latest Security Challenge to the U.S. And I'll put a link to this article in the description below. But it says, U.S. struggles to keep up with the mounting Chinese threats coming out of Latin America. Over the past two decades, China has ramped up its economic ties with nations across Latin America. But it is China's rising influence in the region that has Washington increasingly concerned. The growing threat China poses to the U.S. has moved ever forward in the American conscious as defense officials and lawmakers continue to monitor emerging trends from Beijing's burgeoning relationships worldwide. China's quiet expansion in the Southern Hemisphere has increasingly caught the attention of U.S. defense officials and lawmakers, including Florida Republican Representative Maria Elvira Salazar, who last month drew attention to the growing security threats emerging from Latin America. I had no idea that they were even doing anything down there. I'm not, I'm sure I'm probably behind on this stuff, but this is all news to me. In a House Foreign Affairs Committee hearing, Salazar told lawmakers that Argentina along with nations like Venezuela and Bolivia, were allowing China to gain a military foothold in Latin America. Chinese President Xi Jinping has been to Latin America more times than President Obama, Trump, and Biden combined in the last 10 years. The Chinese are not here for trade. They're here for war. The Florida Congresswoman pointed to China's sales of military equipment and arms to the region over the last decade and claimed that Argentina is now considering opening a Chinese fighter jet factory. Argentina's ambassador to the U.S., Jorge Argrello, rejected Salazar's, Salazar's claims earlier this month as false and called them absurd. However, Salazar drew attention to a deep space station the size of 400 football fields in the middle of Argentina's Patagonia Desert as another chief security concern. 400 football fields. Just think about that for a minute. That's huge. I am sure the Chinese are very interested in studying the stars in every constellation, but the problem is that Argentina has no idea what's going on there because the Chinese don't let them in. She said before questioning whether this program has anything to do with, recent, with the recent Chinese balloon activity over the U.S. The ambassador scoffed at Salazar's concerns regarding the space station, saying he has personally visited it and claimed it was akin to another agreement Argentina has with the European Space Agency. However, one expert on Latin America told Fox News Digital that the U.S. has serious concerns when it comes to the space station. So they've got 400 football fields out there in the remote area of Argentina. They're not let, letting the Argentinians in, and this is totally Chinese ran. I mean, we're not talking about somebody on the other side of the world now, they're practically in our backyard. We have no, play, no clue what takes place there, and neither do the Argentinians. We believe that China is using this as a mechanism to monitor our space activity and otherwise be a collector of intelligence, Juan Cruz, former National Security Senior Director for Western Hemis Hemisphere Affairs, said. Beijing's involvement in Latin America stretches beyond its military interests there. China has a physical presence in about 25 out of 31 Latin American countries, and nearly 30% of its global lending goes to Latin America, according to Salazar's office. Trade between China and Latin America grew, also grew 26-fold from 2000 to 2020, 
an increase from $12 billion to $315 billion, according to the World Economic Forum. So pretty much China, that's what it sounds like to me, China is buying Latin America. They pretty much going to own them soon. This growth that's only expected to keep rising, reaching more than $700 billion a year by 2035. While the U.S. remains Latin America's largest trade partner, China is quickly rising to overtake Washington in nearly every field of the region, including in, in trade, security tech, and diplomatic relations, a feat it is carrying out largely through soft power. We woke up one day and the Chinese were in our neighborhood, Cruz said. That displacement takes place not just in business and government, business and government diplomatic influence, but in terms of technology and what they're doing around the world with a lot more relevance to U.S. interest. Cruz explained that the U.S. has a crisis-oriented view when it comes to Latin American foreign policy, which generally means Washington pays attention to regions after they are already in trouble or causing an issue for the U.S., so they're reactive instead of proactive. Makes sense. Chinese investment and Chinese involvement is the opposite. They're investing and they're having a role where no one's looking. Yeah, the Chinese, China, they're, they're smart. They are smart people and they, I think that they could probably outsmart our officials in the blink of an eye. China's first China first started investing in small local projects throughout Latin America in the late 90s. By the early 2000s, with the start of the war on terrorism, China ramped up its investments in places like the Caribbean, where formal colonial powers were no longer expending as many of their resources. Cruz explained that this left a vacuum that China stepped in and filled, solidifying itself as a top international player in Latin America. That's how quickly they got into the game and bought their influence, he said. They come in with these little projects or insignificant things that you or I diminish the importance of, yet they're thinking of this in a totally different way. Actually, that's pretty genius. And they come in small and then they build and build and nobody's watching. American businesses have already have largely left Latin America for a variety of reasons relating to corruption, legal perimeters, and other foreign financial incentives. However, under China's Belt and Road Initiative, Chinese companies have not only not been deterred by the same hurdles, but they have chosen to invest in projects that do not show obvious or even immediate gains. No one makes money off of a public utility. That's why they're selling them. But the Chinese are buying, Cruz detailed, and that's, and what's that get them? It gets noticed. It gets influence. However, investing in public infrastructure and technology development not only buys China favor in the region, it opens them up to a certain amount of control. Well, of course it does. You control the public utilities and inf public infrastructure. You pretty much control the land. Mm -hmm. The Chinese are brilliant, Cruz said. They buy agreements that do, don't make money, but it gets influence that you can't tabulate. U.S. and international defense officials have long warned of the intelligence that China could be collecting through its Hawaii... Hawaii, it's not Hawaii, but it's Huawei infrastructure and the threat that it, this poses to international security. However, Cruz pointed to another advantage that China gains in acquiring public utility services like water, electric, and internet facilities, bargaining chips. Do you want another country operating and controlling that kind of infrastructure in your country, Cruz question? If they wanted, they could place a tool in their software that controls your electricity remotely. It makes these other countries more beholden to the Chinese. Yeah, I mean, he who controls, you know, all the utilities, including internet and electric, they own, they own you. The influence China appears to be buying in Latin America has security officials concerned by the number of fronts Beijing is inserting itself into. 
including the acquisition of natural resources, 5G development, space security, and ma major geopolitical hot topics like the security of Taiwan. The Chinese playbook is not just one. They have tool after tool after tool that they're employing. Cruz said, explaining it's becoming near impossible to counter China in every sector they are involved in. No, they're spreading across the world. They want total dominance, and they're not going to have it until they take out the United States. They've opened 10 fronts against us. Do we fight all 10 fronts? He continued, can it be done? I don't know. I don't think it can be done. So there you have it. China is pretty much taking over Latin America, which is just right in our backyard. This is no longer, you know, a fact that, you know, well, they're half a world away. No, they're right in our backyard. 400 football fields. That's huge. That, that's like bigger than some of our states here. But that's all I have for today. I will keep you posted as things continue to flow. Until then, y'all have a good day.